All right, look, we must move on. We've got to get to other questions. Our next question, in fact, is from Phil Jones. Uh, how appropriate is it for uh, the Australian government to describe the uh, West Bank and East Jerusalem as disputed territories rather than occupied territories? And doesn't this reinforce the notion that um, international that uh, might is right in international disputes? Start with Dee Madigan. Okay. Um, what this does illustrate is just how powerful words are. Um, I know that Brandis said that occupied was a loaded term, and it is. But so too is disputed because it says that you think that there is value on both sides of the argument. What we've done now by having two words, two possible words we can use, is every single time something like this happens, there will be debate overseas about which word Australia is using. It's opened up a diplomatic minefield that is completely unnecessary and will probably hurt us. Josh, let's um, hear what this actually means. Well. Um, as the Prime Minister, as Julie Bishop, as George Brandis has said, Australia hasn't changed its position because um, success, as far as I can recall, Liberal ministers and Prime Ministers have never called it occupied East Jerusalem and these are subject to negotiations. Now, so can we clarify this because in his initial comments, George Brandis certainly didn't distinguish between other occupied territories, mm. uh, that is on the West Bank, for example, mm. are you now clarifying this and saying he was really only referring to East Jerusalem? Does that mean, in fact, that the West Bank settlements are on occupied territory? Well, the point about the West Bank and um, East Jerusalem is that they're going to be part of a deal. And this is our main message. No, but just very specifically on this question of yep. what's occupied and what is disputed. Right. Well, are the West Bank settlements on occupied well, territory? Well, no. These are these territories that we are discussing that were taken by Israel after the '67 war, when it was invaded by Syria, um, Jordan, and Egypt, are now the subject of negotiation to try to get a peace treaty. So that but, doesn't but, distinguish but, but, between. But, but very specifically, yeah, uh, it doesn't distinguish they, between West Bank. Are they occupied or disputed territories? Because we are going down the path saying all of these areas need to be the subject of negotiation. Yes, but are they occupied or disputed? <laughs> well, in Austra can... Does Australia think of the settlements as well as East Jerusalem as being on well, as, occupied territory? As Julie, Bishop or has said, territory? as Julie Bishop has said, we don't accept Bob Carr's assessment that all these settlements were illegal. And if you go um, to our main point here, which is you're only going to get peace in that part of the world if the two sides mm -hmm. sit down. Okay. Now, I, I, I still don't think you've quite answered that question. Well, I haven't given you the answer, Tony, yeah. that you would like. But what I'm saying is that the only... But it's a simple we, question. We, we don't, we, <laughs> well, you've heard how, how difficult international law is. Um, we believe as a government um, that... Uh, Security Council Resolution 242, yeah. which was passed after the 67 war, and 338, which happened after the 1973 war, are the basis for a negotiated solution. Okay. All right, let's, that's let's, let's hear from uh, Ed Husick and then the other panellists. Well, uh, you know, the person who ver first voiced this view, which, you know, if uh, uh, it is the case, Josh, that, you know, you guys were using these terms behind the scenes, which no one else really knew because it came as a shock. And when we first heard uh, that this was the new term, it was being expressed by Attorney General Brandis, who'd done such a fantastic job in championing reform to Racial Discrimination Act that he decided, well, what's next? I'm going to go on the international sphere and I'm going to inject myself in the most controversial and sensitive issue going in the Middle East and I'm going to change the definition of these territories. I mean, that's worked out a treat. Well, I mean, I mean the, the thing the is... Actual, the, the, uh, the actual... But sorry. the actual thing itself is the occupation... The term occupation is not pejorative. It's an internationally legal concept. It refers to areas that are under physical control that are beyond Israel's 1948 borders. So it's not designed to be a, um, a gotcha moment of describing or assigning uh, certain rights. It's, it's basically identifying what the rest of the world has classed it as. I mean, if the US, the strongest friend of Israel, is still using the term occupied, and we have our own Attorney General you know, deciding to class it differently, you know, what is going on? And the, the consequence of this, putting everything else aside, is people feel so strongly about this that it could actually have an impact on our economic interests. 
And no one wants that. And let's hope it doesn't get to that point. But we'd certainly hope the coalition, instead of playing, you're talking about of the word, possibility of uh, some sort of trade sanctions exactly. against Australia. And I guess the thing is, we'd hope that the word games that the opposition or the coalition, when they were in opposition, used to play, don't continue on in government because there's too much at stake, and they really have got to. They said they'd be the adults in the room, and this isn't really a demonstration of of that virtue. But it is worth pointing out that the Americans have said they haven't wanted to use the term occupied. Yes, it's in the resolution 242 and 338, but when Madeleine Albright, who became the Secretary of State under Bill Clinton, a Democrat, when she was the ambassador to the United Nations for the United States, she said very specifically in 1994, we will not use that term occupied. Let's, uh, we've got a couple of uh, hands up in the audience. Go to the gentleman in the middle first. Go ahead. Yes, that's you, sir. Oh, I just want to say that in terms of the Australia invaded uh, Iraq for non-compliance with the United Nations resolutions. And here we are throwing United Nations resolutions again uh, in terms of the East Jerusalem and the occupied territories. And we call them disputed. We changed that. And so we're not actually recognizing United Nations resolutions anymore. Let's hear from our other panelists here. And I'll start with Virasila and then I'll go to James. How, how, you, you listen to this argument. Does it make sense to you, first of all? Um, well, yeah, not really. Because I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, I mean, these words occupied, disputed. I mean, the people of the First Nation of Australia would, you know, call um, Caucasian Australians as occupying um, Australia. I mean, is how do you, I mean, why, why is this definition being, this difference being made? Um, I mean, what is what is your definition of occupied, and what is your definition of disputed? I mean, yeah, that, that's what I'm curious. We'll throw about. that in as a rhetorical question. We'll go to James. Well, you're going to like this. I agree with about 95 percent of what Ed said, actually, but I'd like to put it into context for you. Israel is the only democracy in a sea of awful places in the Middle East, and I mean awful. Not only, hang on, not only is it a democracy. Palestinians in Israel do better than they do in, just be quiet, will you? They do better, they do better than a lot of other places. And in the last, I don't know, two or three attempts at peace, basically all of the West Bank has been offered and it's just seemingly that that's not enough. And a lot of these countries don't even recognize Israel. So in that context, you know, Israel gets judged by pretty harsh standards. They don't get, they don't get judged by anywhere near the same standards as shall we start, you know, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Iran, um, even Jordan. So in that context, we are very hard on Israel. And if you want an example of that, the United Nations Human Rights Council, which is the leading human rights council for the entire world, makes resolutions and they condemn, you know, various countries for human James, rights. James, we're going to run out Hang of time. On, no, 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 I'm not. There have been more, only interrupting there have been more resolutions against Israel than every other country on earth put together. James, I'm just it's gonna, ridiculous. I'm just going to bring you back to, you said you agreed with a lot of what Ed said. Well, he's, he's right. I wouldn't be changing the wording myself. He's totally right. So on the question of occupied and disputed, you would leave it at occupied, would you? I don't, I don't see what you got. I don't okay, we've got one more right. uh, person up the back who's patiently had his hand up for a while there. Yes, go ahead. I would like to know how would you consider Israel is the only democracy in the awful Middle East while the Arab community, the Palestinian community there does not have the same rights, does not have equal rights with the Israelis and with the Jewish community. How can it be democracy within this like kind of apartheid regime that we have there? Okay, Josh, a quick, uh, a quick response. Well, Having a Palestinian state, which is a democracy, sitting side by side with Israel as a democracy has to be the goal. It absolutely has to be the goal because these issues have been debated for thousands of years. Australia is this year, the Abbott government, giving $56 million in terms of aid to the Palestinian territories, the most of any government previously in Australia. So we are doing what we can to try to advance this. Um, now. It's right that in the past um, there has been peace treaties in the Middle East with Egypt in 79, with Jordan in 94, and Olmert and Barak both offered um, the area for a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as the capital. Now that was turned back by Arafat. It is hoped, and you saw at the, um, the Pope host both the President of Israel and the President um, of Fatah, um, recently in the Vatican. It is hoped, step by step, we can bring the parties together, 
Because the only way both the Palestinians and the Israelis can have true peace and security for their children is a genuine two-state solution. OK, we're going to have to move on because we've got a few other questions to get to. Uh, sorry to those people who are still on that subject. Our next question is from Mark Manning.